Hey guys, Corey here with another concept video. Today it's all about evolution and natural selection. In this video, we'll take a look at how evolution functions through natural selection. And this one's really important, so let's get started. Before we delve into evolution, let's take a look at how organisms vary, because variation is a key factor in evolution. Now there are a number of different processes which result in variation of organisms and one which results in the development of entirely new genes. In sexually reproducing organisms, variation can come about through meiosis and random fertilisation, which has been studied earlier in this course and results in offspring that are a mix of genes of the parents. And for a bigger summary of these, please refer back to our video on meiosis. Mutations, however, are the source of all new genes and allow organisms in a population to introduce entirely new traits. In many cases, mutations can be lethal. However, in some cases, mutations can arise that provide an organism with a selective advantage over others and can therefore be passed on and increase in frequency within the gene pool. Now that we understand that, let's delve into evolution. One of the most influential scientists in the history of biology was Charles Darwin, who provided the first explanation for how the process of evolution takes place. In 1831, Darwin left England on a sea voyage on board a ship called the Beagle, which was touring the south coast of South America. It was here, particularly in the Galapagos Islands, where he was fascinated by the variety of individuals in a population and also between closely related species. During his voyage, Darwin hypothesised that for each population, more individuals were born than the ecosystem could sustain, and that only a select few survived to breed and reproduce. In his book, The Origin of Species, published in 1859, Darwin suggested that evolution was a product of a process called natural selection in which nature, or the environment, selected those individuals who were best adapted to survive, or what he called the fittest. He proposed that variation between individuals gave some organisms a reproductive advantage, which would enable these organisms to breed in greater numbers and therefore contribute more to the future gene pool. This idea was explained using what are now called Darwin's finches. As can be seen in this diagram, each type of finch found on neighbouring islands have slightly different shaped beaks, and each one provides a unique adaptation for the type of food predominantly found in that particular environment. Darwin's thinking, which was both revolutionary and controversial for the time, was that natural selection over a series of generations was the main driving force for this evolution. He proposed that life had evolved from a common ancestor and through natural selection, populations were modified over time according to different environments and thus different selective pressures they were exposed to. His conclusion therefore was that these finches were once the same species but it evolved over time to be best suited to the different environments in which they now exist. So in other words, natural selection is a process in which selective pressures, like for example competition for mates, acts on individuals in a population and thus leads to the decision on which organisms will live and pass on their genes and which ones will die. This selection due to selective pressures then results in changes in allele frequency in a gene pool as certain alleles are favoured and others are not. And this is actually where the term survival of the fittest arose from, as alleles of the favoured traits in the population's gene pool increase in frequency over time, whilst alleles selected against will decrease in frequency, leading over time to the constant evolution of a species to new selective pressures. Well, that's it for evolution and natural selection. I hope it helped, and as always, check back soon for more concept videos.